So I'm Dr. Jason Williams. I'm a board certified radiologist and I focus in interventional oncology, which are minimally invasive procedures for cancer. And we've brought these procedures here to H Plus Hospital where we can offer patients the most advanced cancer care. Uh, we particularly focus in areas of minimally invasive procedures and cancer immunotherapy. Um, I wrote the book, The Immunotherapy Revolution, which is about cancer immunotherapy. And we're very happy to be here serving patients from here and abroad. The most common question, doctor, what is cancer? Yes, yeah, so cancer is when a cell has mutations in its genes and it grows out of control. So cells normally divide and the, the DNA, the genes in the cell are copied. But sometimes there's mistakes copying, just like if you're writing, if you're copying uh, from a book and you might make an error. And these errors can then actually lead to the cell growing and not really obeying the normal rules of cells. The, the body has ways to look for this. So you have things that check and make sure that the copying of the DNA is correct, but sometimes it escapes. And also when the cancer, when it becomes a cancer and starts growing, initially you hope that the immune system recognizes and sees that it's a mistake and stops it. But a lot of times these cancers are very sneaky. They can suppress the immune system. And once they start growing and developing, they essentially become like an organ in your body. So this is one reason that early detection is very important because you want to catch before these cancers become big and powerful. What are the most risk factors to develop cancer in any type? Yeah, so I would say number one obviously is smoking. I think smoking, is not just for lung cancer, but also you know for other cancers, pancreas, esophagus, stomach. Um, that's probably the biggest risk factor. Otherwise, uh, diet, you know, high fat diet is very risky. Things that would normally even cause heart disease, same risk for cancer. Um, one of the things that we find is that the bacteria in your intestines, what we call the gut microbiome interact with your immune system and help suppress cancer. But if your diet has things that kill a lot of those bacteria, uh, you know, some artificial sweeteners uh, and high fats, and you have a, basically a reduced microbiome, then you have a higher risk of cancer. So people who have a high fiber diet, so eat lots of plants and things like that, they have a better microbiome that's better to fight off or, and prevent cancer. Can we detect or have some symptoms that can alert us that we might have some cancer? Yeah, so of course, you know, some cancers you don't really notice anything until it becomes very advanced. P particularly things like when you look at cancers of the GI tracts, they may have bleeding like blood in the stool. Um, for, uh, you know, for cancer of the, the lungs, people get a cough, a chronic cough. And so those things, when, pe when people have those issues, they need to be checked out. Clearly, there's very screening for uh, smokers. You know, they're doing uh, periodic CT scans of the chest to look for cancers. That's very, very common now as a screening. And clearly, you know, you have other things like for women, you know, should do self exams, mammography. Um, if, if, the, if a person feels something in their breast or they get an unusual discharge, those can all be signs of cancer as well. What treatments exist to treat cancer? So number one, generally, is going to be surgery. So if a patient is detected early with their cancer, they could usually have it surgically removed and that's going to offer one of the better chances of a cure. Uh, beyond that, and you, you can actually mix and match some of these, so you could get surgery and then still you have things like chemotherapy. Chemotherapy, generally most people consider these as uh, medications that are toxic to the cancer and can be toxic to the body. They can damage the DNA of, of the cancer. Of course, nowadays there's a lot more options. People might consider this chemotherapy, but there's drugs that target specific things to the cancer and are less damaging to normal uh, cells. And so those are that's what we call targeted drugs. And then uh, you have radiation, which is of course, you know, radiating an area of tumor, trying to create damage into the DNA of the tumor where it doesn't, you know, divide and can't grow. And then nowadays the, the newer area is immunotherapy where you're using drugs to get the immune system to see and attack the cancer. And this is a very exciting time with that and that's where a lot of the cancer therapies are going. Talking about the chemotherapy or radiotherapy, what are the effects that this causes? 
Yeah, so of course, you know, they, they are harsh therapies. So chemotherapy is generally a toxic agent, so it's poisonous to cells. Cancer grows faster than your normal cells, and so fast dividing cells are generally more sensitive to chemotherapy, but it also hurts your normal cells. So it can cause low blood counts, both in your, your red blood cells, so you become anemic, um, or white blood cells, so you're at risk for more infections. You know, clearly people lose hair, they get upset, uh, you know, stomach and feel, you know have issues with nausea. Those are typical things. Radiation, similar effects. Of course, you know nowadays the radiation is targeted very well, um, but generally most issues with radiation was the, the off-target effect. So you're targeting a tumor, but you get extension into other areas that can cause damage. And again, nausea, burn, burn skin. Uh, can you know depending on where where you're treating. So those are issues with radiation just to make a self-awareness. How important is to take care of us? Uh, so early detection is your best chance for a cure because if you can find cancer early, then you're significantly better off to treat it. And so normal things like uh, for women, not only self-exams, but mammograms. Uh, for men, prostate exams, checking the prostate uh, specific antigen, which is a blood test. And then things like colonoscopy, um, so you need periodic colonoscopies for, for people, particularly once they reach a certain age, usually by the age of 40 to 45. Uh, some people say you know, it can extend a little later. Uh, and, and now there's actually becoming more and more blood tests looking for uh, DNA, tumor DNA in the blood. And that's uh, newer uh, techniques to be able to screen.